We will now talk about the carpels. These two rows of intricately fitting bones move in a complex manner and each row of bones can move with different strategies during hand or forearm movements. The bones seem to move in a helical spiral orientation depending on flexion, extension or lateral medial deviation. Therefore, there is much scope for somatic dysfunction due to subluxation. To examine the carpals, we need to have the patient seated. First, shear the radio ulna and proximal row of carpals. Next, shear the intercarpal joint line, separating the proximal row from the distal row. And finally, the distal row of carpals and their respective metacarpals. To manipulate the individual carpal bones, a crossed thumb technique is best applied by the operator. With the patient's wrist either palm up or palm down according to carpal bone dysfunction, the operator is able to articulate specifically each joint in turn using a figure of eight motion whilst applying traction to the wrist to engage the individual joints. When dysfunction is encountered, a rapid low velocity impulse is applied with minimum depth of movement. Dysfunction of the trapezium first met joint requires a different approach to manipulation. With the patient seated or supine, the operator grips the patient's thumb with one hand using their fingers only and applies traction and rotation to engage the barrier at the trapezium first metacarpal joint. With the operator's thumb, now apply a downward thrust on the base of the first metacarpal, thus gapping the joint.